So I'm Jesse Meese, a director of web strategy at Advent Health. I'm really excited to talk with you all today. I don't get a chance to do this much outside of my own organization, so thank you. Um, thank you, guys. Um, you know, this particular introduction, you, you get to see, uh, this is an example of a knowledge graph, and you can see my quirky uh, music. Uh, you know, I like to listen to Camp and Hosier and uh, Abbott Brothers, et cetera. Uh, I'm probably the only Gator grad in the room, and I like to spend time outdoors when I can, when I'm not behind uh, my desk in my claw office or at my co-working space. Um, I want you to notice that, you know, maybe if you like some of the same bands that I do, or uh, you like hiking, that a knowledge graph is relational and contextual. So um, maybe we have some things in common. More to come on this. I first want to acknowledge the organization that I represent today. Advent Health strives to be known for our preeminent faith-based and consumer-focused clinical care. That's a direct quote. I like to get it right. We operate in nine states and over, um, have over 90,000 employees across 35 post-acute care sites and 52 hospitals. We encounter many patients and provide uh, service to help many in our community find care or is represented in our value lives number there. So I asked you guys before, what is schema markup? Let's go through the definition and hopefully my notes are so long I can scroll. I don't know if I can. It's fine. I'll wing it. Schema markup, also known as structured data markup. So that's code that you add to your website's HTML to provide additional context and information about your contents and search engines. So why do we care about that? It uses standardized vocabulary. That's coming from schema.org, and it defines the meaning and relationship of different elements on your websites. So here's why it's important. It provides enhanced search engine understanding. So the Googles, the Bings, and others use schema markup to better understand the content of your web pages. So by adding the structured data, you're providing explicit clues about the type of content, the articles, the products, the uh, events, or really anything. These are types of entities. And each one of these entities has specific details with that content. So a title, an author, a price, a date. We've talked about AI. I know you guys have probably heard about AI all week. You've been in these sessions, in the table sessions. So how does schema factor in with uh, structured data and AI? Um, voice search. So anything that's AI-driven assistance, structured data becomes really crucial. Um, you're going to get uh, really, <laughs> you're going to get some interesting answers, but um, you probably hopefully get something that's relevant to your, um, to your voice commands. Uh, richer search results. I have an example of this. This is probably what you guys are most familiar with whenever you think of schema, those rich snippet results. Um, improve visibility and click-through rates. I'll talk a little bit more about that, um, but those richer results uh, created by schema can attract more attention from users, so your listings stand out. Uh, your star ratings, your product availability, the event details, those users are more likely to click on them and engage, and that boosts your click-through rate. And uh, my last note is, is future-proofing your SEO. Um, that's kind of cut off, but I pretty much remember it. It's essentially making sure that um, Google moves the go goalposts a lot, right? Um, and I told my table before, you've got to cover the basis, right? So if you, if you feel like you're doing all the right things, um, and you're providing the consumers with the best data possible, you'll get rewarded for it. Um, sometimes those rewards ebb and flow, but you will get rewarded for it. What is an entity? Oh, I have too many notes here, but I'll, I'll say it quickly. Um, the entity refers to a specific object or thing um, within your structured data markup. I'm just kind of getting the vocabulary down so we can have a common conversation. Uh, the, it could be a product, event entity, a person entity, et cetera. And they all have attributes, so, you know, as I mentioned before. Your web page. Your website um, can be thought of as your organization's entity home. It's hub, it's a conduit. It's like the housing for your structured data and anything that can interpret it. It's your digital front door. You guys have heard digital front door a hundred times. All right, it wouldn't be DrupalCon, I guess, without some code on a page, right? Uh, it's not really code. Don't the coders don't come for me. This is markup. It's, they're they're like it's just a JSON object, Jesse. Um, so this JSON object and structured data re represent an organization. This one ha happens to be Advent Health uh, in a format that search engines and other systems can understand. So let's break it down 
I won't break down them all, but uh, let's take a look at some that might be interesting, like legal name. Legal name of the organization, also called Advent Health. Let's hope it's called Advent Health, right? Um, but the other one I want to, to call attention to is this one that says areas served. Notice where it says name Florida and same as, and it has a wiki link. And this one happens to be a Wikidata link. It could be a Wikipedia link. And I'll have more to come on that and how it actually affects your results and structured data. As I mentioned a moment ago, how many of you guys have seen rich snippets? You do your Google search and you see things that help you engage with those results. So um, on your SERPs, you can see a doctor, a recipe, video, a job listing, a product, and um, you know it's kind of front and center. It's your zero click result, right? Uh, and as I mentioned before, don't stop uh, your schema markup for rich results because they come and go. And uh, how many of you guys saw Google remove the how-to rich results as well as the FAQs or diminished FAQs? Um, but don't, don't, uh, don't, don't fret. There is a bigger picture whenever those things change. And I'll talk about that bigger picture as well. So now that we've reviewed what schema markup is, we, uh, we've seen what it looks like in a code form or markup form. Um, how might a healthcare page be represented? Let's use this example as a, as a physician data type. And here's one from our website. Uh, the content on this page is for Dr. Vipu Patel, his name, his medical specialty, the location he works at, his ratings, and et cetera. And on adminhealth.com, this page has a few entities identified. So. One important note here is the concept of relationships between entities and the properties that they may share. Remember my first cheesy photo with all of the things that maybe we share in common. Remember AI, LLMs, and machine learning programs, they're relying heavily on context to gain a better in understanding of your content. It's a lot of inferencing. An attribute of this instance of a physician entity with Dr. Patel Shows he's a member of Advent Health. Let's hope so, since he's on screen. And Dr. Patel has a 4.8 out of five star rating from 744 reviews. That would make him eligible for one of those rich snippets I showed you a moment ago. And also, let's talk about LERs. For his medical specialty, he's a urologist. So we're using a Wikidata link to describe what is urology. It's not a indie band called Urology. It's Urology the Specialty. So when you use schema markup to explain content and its relationship to other things, you're building a knowledge graph. I asked you a moment ago, what's a knowledge graph? You guys know what that is. Um, it's a collection of relationships between things using a standardized vocabulary from which a new knowledge can be gained through inferencing. Oof, this is a complicated slide. And I, my notes are too long, so I'll just do my best. You'll see here, this is actually a, this is actually a small section of, of avidhealth.com um, in this visual knowledge graph. And each one of these nodes, not especially Drupal nodes per se, uh, show a level of connected, uh, connectivity similar to like the, the Kevin Bacon game, right? The degrees of Kevin Bacon. Um, there's contextual understanding, so the knowledge graph pr provides context to data by showing different pieces of information and how they relate to each other. Uh, there's enhanced search and discovery. So search engines and content platforms use knowledge, use knowledge graphs to improve search results and content recommendations. That makes sense because we're gonna have personalization and recommendations. So they can power personalized uh, experiences by analyzing user behavior, preferences, and content interactions. Data integration and insights. Um, so that information can be uh, integrated in various uh, sources and systems. Um, it creates a unified view of information. So that's all to say knowledge graphs are really important just for understanding how things are connected. I promise to talk about integration. I'm not the super tech guy. Uh, I used to be, I promise, but now I do a lot of presentations for the company and um, I, I lead a team of marketers. So. Let's talk about integration, and I did have a good conversation with Schema App. Uh, that's our vendor of choice at Advent Health. I love Phase 2. I, I, you guys are a vendor of choice, too. I love you guys. I just happen to use yeah. Schema App. To, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I happen to use Schema App to, um, as an example today just to hammer home some of the importance of structured data. Um, 
Schema app leverages the Drupal server-side cache, so it allows full control of the data available. And when I talk to Jared at, at, at Schema Hub, he says, without question, Drupal is the easiest CMS for them to integrate with. Um, and I don't doubt that other vendors that may operate in the same space may say the same thing. When I share this presentation, there's a, a link here for a deployment overview, but I'll, I'll give you the breakdown. It's simply acquiring Schema app, that tool, uh, either from their website or from Marketplace, you install it on Drupal via um, the uh, following in installation instructions provided by Schema app, and then you connect with a connector module. Uh, so after installation, uh, you use the connector module to link Schema app with your Drupal site. So that's the bridge, there's API connection. Uh, I think it probably takes them a very short amount of time to set this up. Um, on the How It Works side, you have JavaScript gener generating that JSON object that I showed you earlier, and that posts back to the um, to Drupal server. So it's actually cached. It's not directly injected into the page. Um, so anytime that page gets called, that JSON uh, object gets injected. Um, as I mentioned, that benefit is a faster page load. Um, there's no, no delay there just because of structured data and that dynamic structured data that schema app manages for us. And um, can some considerations. It says it requires a technical team um, to add a maintain plugin. I, I would I would say that's just for the day, or however long it takes to get that initial instantiation completed. One of the beautiful things about the schema app for us is that it's set it and forget it. Thank you, Georgiana. Um, we set it and we don't really have to worry about that dynamic component. Um, you know, when things change, when the page renders, we get new FAQs for a provider. Schema app handles that for us, and that's represented in the schema app. So, in the schema, so we don't have to go through and make those changes on a weekly, daily basis. Pretty cool. All right, I promised to tell you about LERs, and I showed some examples. And what is it? It's identifying and embedding entities to provide additional semantic value, helping search engines understand content better. It reduces that ambiguity. So if I say avatar, I might be talking about the movie versus a picture of me on a app, uh, uh, supporting more accurate results and uh, a more descriptive knowledge graph, that big hairball that I showed not too long ago. And this is directly from our website, guys. And this is really exciting. I, I jumped out of my chair when I saw this on our QBR from last week. So. Average CTR for uh, January to March of 2023 was 3.6 on the adventhealth.com website. For the same period in 2024, um, when, it, when it was enabled in Mar uh, November of 2023, is at 4.6. So we saw a significant jump whenever um, Schema App started activating those linked entity recognitions for our structured data. Really exciting stuff. Uh, I have one example of where they did that here, uh, just on our, um, our urgent care. So, and that was the average, right? So we had some that were really high, like this one uh, seems to be around 14%. Um, so again, the example showing knows about, and this one's not that Jesse Meese knows about digital marketing supposedly, but that's about how this urgent care or this urgent care relates to Florida market and linking to that wiki data, wiki data um, article. So in summary, um, schema is structured data that helps machines better understand your content. And integrating with third party vendors like schema app is easy and a low maintenance with Drupal. When you employ schema, you are building a knowledge graph for your organization's site, which boosts your SEO and LERs in your schema yields CTR improvements. You guys have any questions? All right, so we'll open it up to questions for either one. Um, I'm gonna go first, so sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I'll have you. Um, so what's next? You, can you kind of give us any preview of any new features that might be coming or things that you're thinking about or you know things that we're already building or? Yeah, or, there, yeah, or yeah, there's a, here's 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 a, here
I think we're generally um, right now working on building a homegrown conditions and treatments directory that would like work off of the taxonomy that I presented about. I did hear some really cool ideas earlier from Andy and we were like, you know, texting amongst each other during his talk, like, do you think we can implement that? But really, yeah, like some of our focus is definitely on that, you know, of course we have to contend to other things like, you know, CDN for like PHI collection and an, anonymization um, to be able to like feed that data into our other platforms. So there's a couple of things we have um, running um, in flight in parallel, but specific to the Drupal CMS, um, the conditions and treatments directory, I think would be the biggest. Is this one still on? Yeah. Okay, well, phase two already let the cat out of the bag on sustainability. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that is a big yeah. focus for us, for us this year is um, at Avent Health, really good stewards of the environment. Um, these guys mentioned a moment ago the um, you know a lot of the efforts there for our sustainability group um, solar panels are going up all over our campus and we want our website to represent um, that core value for the organization so sustainability and performance is really key for us in 2024 yeah do we have any questions from the audience oh yes go ahead So the taxonomy is heavily curated. There's a whole governance board that like reviews any time a new term gets added. So, and it comes built in with aliases that could be like misspellings or plurals. So the way they get stored in our system, you have the parent term and then you have all the aliases and the concept attached to that. So it's a, it's a growing body. I think I mentioned, you know, we started with 30,000. We pull these in from the third party application we use. We pull it on a daily basis. So a physician could be updating their, um, if you will, like clinical keywords, um, you know, the day before it'll pull into the site, it will retag on the node for, for his provider profile. He could decide to say, okay, I don't longer do this procedure. I wanna not be found for it. You could do that in real time, but specifically to the curation, it is a curated taxonomy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, RDF triples is a fancy way of saying like, you like pizza, right? Subject, predicate, object, but the three things, or a few things, on the final slide, if you're not using structured data for the core elements in your site today, do it. If you can find a way to automate that structured data so you don't have a team constantly going through and managing your, your, your apps to uh, glean and, and manipulate and manually update your, your structured data, your schema on your site, if you can find a way to do that, uh, that is seamless, do it. And yeah, Schema App is the name of the company. Mm -hmm. If I didn't make that clear, that's that's the vendor, right? So, um, and then uh, derive those benefits, right? So I talked about that knowledge graph. At Avent Health, we're really fortunate to have had that maturity model pretty well developed now. So the site's been out there for some time. That knowledge graph, just like a snowball, uh, builds, right? It gets more and more, um, more and more context. Uh, as those linked entity um, elements and, uh, get added, you, we, get, we get additional benefit, right? So 
AI machines, search engines, they start to understand and infer better what your site is about, and you get those click-throughs, you get better SEO results. So do structured data, get help if you can, and then focus on the things that really matter within your structured data. And I would say that's one really great thing about Drupal, is you do have structured data. So that's the big bonus, too. So. Are there any more questions? Go ahead. Brooke? Uh, I'm not Brooke. We're going to go with her first. Uh, then we'll go to Brooke. <laughs> Georgiana. Hi. I'm basically in your team with the kind of where you started from and then we're stepping into a new one. Very similar of like having so many subsites. Um, so what did you use to sort of build consensus of making this change? I think the biggest um, lesson learned was the phased approach. So I wouldn't necessarily try to tackle all at once. So I think we were able to prove the, the, the case to transition everything into an enterprise site, into a mega site is what we're calling it internally by having an MVP first that showed them like, hey, here's how your search could work if your content was on our main site instead of sitting separately where it is today. So I think that having that go live ahead of like the full migration of the rest of the content and essentially decoupling what the chair thought was the site's content and what marketing thought would be the content that patients are looking for so that is why we created that con you know medical service concept you see it a lot you know like on another health system sites we didn't have it going into this process everything was separated right so we took all of their clinical content from their department sites and we put them Put, put that content on the main site, and we launched with that. So there were some ruffled feathers, you know, obviously they're like, you you know, what did you do? Our content is no longer where it needs to be. But, you know, with the, the conversation then centered around like, hey, you know, your department site with all of the academic research components and your, you know, message from the chair could sit in this powerful platform. You can bring it in. But clinically, you know, from a standpoint of the clinical content, we want to be able to market these services. We need to do it in a right way instead of just kind of let, letting you run your sites the way you did so far. So I think it helped phasing it instead of, again, you're trying to do your provider directory redesign and then your you know layouts and templates and bringing content, recipe for failure if you're trying to do it all at once. So, and I would give you know um, your organization at least 24 months for the process A to Z. Oh, okay. It was the That's coolest thing, coolest thing. We can do a talk <laughs> for an hour about like splitting traffic yeah. between legacy and new, but that was. Yeah. We'll take one more question. So. Not Brooke had her hand up. Well, let me answer that. <laughs> so, um, so because the structure from the old sites and then we were using layout builder and components, it's not easy to do any kind of programmatic um, uh, migration of that old content, which is really mostly in a WYSIWYG editor um, and you know, in a blob of text. And so we wanted to use the new component library. So I know because I helped migrate <laughs> on many of those pages and, and Jesse, um, you know, from the old site and onto the new site. So um, anything else you want to add there? Yeah, just a quick note to say we used it as a cleanup exercise yeah. too. Yeah. So we went from about 10,000 content pages to maybe 6,000 that actually got ported. And I'm not counting providers, locations, and some of the um, auto-generated mm -hmm. templated pages, yeah. And I know that was before your time. The Avon Health migration was before your time there. So. Yeah, when we're all working together. Yeah. All right. Well, I so appreciate, Jesse, you coming all the way up from Florida and joining us for the day. 
and Georgiana, of course, you know, coming here and, uh, you know, the fun that we've been having this week you. for your first DrupalCon. And your first DrupalCon, too. Yeah. So oh, thank you so much. Lama. Yeah, though, no llama. <laughs> and now we're going to break for lunch. I believe it's in the same place it's been for the last three days out in the ballroom. So, yep. Get a picture of them. And so we'll be back at one. So, yeah.